and welcome to another edition of King Crush Thursdays, the series where we highlight and uplift Black men because frankly, not too many people are doing it. My name is Val Gay and I am super excited about this King today. He is called the Connection Curator and he's creator of a 14 time award winning, now Emmy award winning series, TV series called Date While You Wait. His name is Mr. Thomas Knox. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Mel. Thank you so much for having me. You did that so well. Like, great okay. job. Thank you. That <laughs> thank was great. You. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you're here. And Thomas, um, as you've seen, like we are, we have these conversations. Um, I really want to be a part of the shifting narrative that heretofore has been very myopic about Black men, about our community, but Black men particularly. And it's been very very myopic and showing mostly just a sliver of our community. And so what we're creating here is a repository of six questions on our way to 100 answers by 100 different positive and successful Black men. And I'm so excited because ultimately the goal is for a young king who may or may not have a positive Black male role model in his life to be able to come to this repository see the same six questions and all these different answers and hopefully find guidance and find himself in these answers. And then for the rest of us who are neither male or even black, for us to be able to take a look into this amazing community and see different answers and hopefully shift and open up our frame, if you will, um, to see more of, of this beautiful community that we call Black men. And so I'm so glad that you're here to participate in this narrative. And I'm gonna get started with the first question, which is, what does manhood mean to you? Such a, such a great question. Uh, well, before I jump into the question, I gotta give you a shout out. This is incredible. Um, being a part of this is great, but on the flip side, what it represents is even bigger. So uh, it's an honor to, to be able to kind of share my thoughts and some insight and uh, be a part of the process. So thank you so much for this. Um, what does manhood mean to me? Um, first thing that comes to mind is integrity. Like, like uh, that's the first word that pops into my head. But essentially manhood is shown by integrity, about uh, by being consistent. Um, I feel like for me, when my dad is, my hero. I talk a lot about my dad. So if you ever listen to anything that I uh, I talk talk on podcasts, interviews, I talk a lot about how my dad has influenced me, and uh, he influenced me based on how he carried himself. Um, as as I sometimes share, is growing up, my dad never smoked, never drank, uh, never late to work. He worked for the Department of Sanitation twenty years, never late. Uh, worked at 4 p.m., left our house at 2 p.m. every day to go to work. Um, and he showed me what not only manhood is from a professional standpoint, but being someone who was in the household and supported me. Um, it, it was just something that resonated with me really well. Um, and it wasn't only from that side, but also how I treat uh, Black women, and how I treat women in my life. So I think, you know, manhood is being consistent, being mindful, uh, walking with pride, especially black manhood, being being having pride in yourself, and uh, yeah, God, there's there's so much more, but essentially that's that's what pops into my head um, when you ask that question. That's awesome. I have to say, I don't editorialize, but I have to say, me too. I always talk about my dad because my dad is awesome, and so <laughs> I just it's just so great when I when I hear someone else talk about their dad. Um, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for that. Um, so Thomas, who and or what is important to you? Uh, yeah, well, I, I say a lot, uh, or a lot of times I say connection is my currency. Um, so what's important to me more than anything is creating and uh, cultivating connections. Uh, I believe that money, you know, money can buy, buy things for us, but I, I feel like relationship just takes it to a whole nother level. Um, and being able to uh, facilitate that, being able to uh, create spaces where people can connect is something that's really, really big for me, um, important to me. Um, I also talk about legacy a lot, uh, just being able, knowing from where my family's come from and um, where we come from as a people, 
and stepping into our future and, and, and supporting future generations. Um, legacy is very, very important. And, you know, how you carry yourself, you know, how you speak, how you articulate, those are all things that I think uh, is, is, is something that's, that I, I hold very, very close, very, very dear and how I, and how I, uh, how I connect with the world. So um, I would say those are the things that are, uh, are important to me, or some of the things. There, there are way more, but those are some. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Awesome. Excellent. So Thomas, how do you want us to see you? And these are, these are great questions. How do I want, because, um, hmm. it's, it's interesting because I always been the type of guy to be like, I don't really care how people see me because I'm going to be me unapologetically me no matter what, um, and be an individual no matter what. I, but on the flip side, you know, perception is key. That's what you hear so much. Perception is key. How people perceive you is key. So I, I would hope that, uh, or I say, I, I would want people to see someone who is caring, someone who is, uh, someone who has who drive, who has drive and driven, um, someone's com- community oriented, and uh, just like those characteristics that my dad has and, and had growing up. A lot of a lot of that, you know, the integrity, um, the grace. Um, so when people see me and people meet me, uh, I'm, it's it's very important for me to give off, as we say, positive energy. <laughs> um, so I, I would say that that's definitely a, you know what I want um, people to to get from me. And then, as I'm saying this, another thing that comes to mind is. Uh, someone they can talk to, they can open up to, they can be related, they can relate uh, with. Um, I, I, a lot in, in the work that I do, I find that when two people can relate with each other, they find that common ground and the rest of the relationship and the conversation flourishes. Um, so you can talk about maybe a love for uh, Scrabble or maybe you both like a specific type of movie, but once you find that that uh, common that commonality, then you're able to build from there. So um, I hope that when people see me, they see someone who is not angry. Because I, I used to hear this a lot growing up that I look like I have I have angry black man syndrome. You ever heard you ever heard that that terrible? That like you don't look happy and not smiling. And just because somebody's not smiling doesn't mean they don't they're not having a great day. It's just they they may be in the moment. So. Um, I just want to create space where people can be open and be willing to share. And, um, and it doesn't matter who you are as a black man. I take pride in being able to walk in a room, no matter what the room and still stand tall. Um, and I've been in those situations where I'm the only black person in the room. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, not something I take lightly. Um, it's something that's very, very important to me. So, um, yeah, I, I want people to, to see that when they see me. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So Thomas, what is your epic dream? Oh man, these are great. Epic dream. Hmm. Does is there is there a does it need to is there any specifics? Does it need to be some professionally, personally? It doesn't matter. As I often say, Thomas, this is your question for you to answer <laughs> whatever way you want. Epic dream. Hmm. I don't know. I would say uh, my epic, when you say epic dream, it, 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 it heightens it. So that's why I want to make sure I choose something really good. I'm like, this is great. What is my epic dream? I probably say, you know, build, building, continue to build community, but I, I have a, an, an idea where uh, essentially I build a hub of community where, where people, where young people, not even young people, but anybody can come and, and create and connect. Um, I call it the connection hub. So my epic dream would be able to build that out. Um, essentially a, a building where if the kids want to draw on the walls, they can draw on the walls. And, you know, if you, and it's okay to make mistakes because that uh, creates growth. Um, so that, that's really a, a big dream of mine professionally. Um, I would say personally, you know, just like everybody else, building uh, a family or building legacy that is going to be catapult the next generation, um, being a positive influence on uh, not only young people, but anybody I come in contact with in some way, shape or form. Um, you know, uh, no matter who it is, no matter what they do, when 
they hear Thomas Knox. They're like, okay, that's that's the Emmy winner, but he this is the Thomas I know. Um, so I would say those two things would be my epic dream <laughs> or dreams. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. So yeah. Thomas C. Knox, who are you? <laughs> I feel like I've answered this question, but I'll, I'll try to change it up a little bit. Uh, I am, hmm, who am I? I, I think I think back to all the uh, think back to all the uh, signs from like the Million Man March and and uh, and uh, the African American uh, Parade and things like that and museums where it's like I am somebody. <laughs> so that's what popped into my head. I have it written on my wall in the red, black, and green. I am somebody. So I'll start with that. <laughs> but beyond that. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a son. I'm a brother. Um, I'm someone who grew up in the inner city, and uh, I I don't I don't I don't uh, have anything negative to say about it because it was experience. So I, I I'm I'm a guy who values experience and life experience. So I would say I'm a student of life. Um, I'm a, I'm a uh, citizen of the world. I say that a lot as well. Um, I believe that there's nowhere, not only myself, but anybody, but there's nowhere I can't go in this world. I should be able to walk into any room. I should be able to get on, go into any country because I'm a citizen of the world, just like everyone else. So um, Thomas Knox is just a guy that loves to connect. I love, uh, you know, like, like I said earlier, connection is my currency. Uh, I, I have a story just like everybody else, but in in in, uh, in ending, I am somebody. <laughs> Indeed, you are, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And I often say, you know, you've been answering this implicitly. I'll ask you explicitly, but you already filled that narrative in for me. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, and then here we are already at question six, which is, is there anything... Um, I should have asked you that I didn't, or you wanted me to ask you that I didn't. In other words, what did I miss? I, I wouldn't say there's anything you missed. I, I would love to elaborate on maybe just the times. I think I think you know there's a lot happening with our community, especially when it comes to uh, when it comes to race relations. Um, even in sports, there's a lot happening um, with black men, and I think there's there are so many different uh, current events that are happening. I know you have a, a, a lot of these conversations, so I'm sure there are things happening at those time within those times that might be good to just share our thoughts on. Um, me, me, more specifically, more specifically, what's on my mind now is a lot of what's happening with these verdicts for officers being uh, prosecuted. Um, it's something that I think young black people, not only black men, but black women um, should be proud of, but also be, still be cautious. Um, because if someone is being prosecuted, it's because they committed a crime. And, and we need to be mindful of, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to be mindful of, yes, there's a celebration and, hey, this person was convicted, but the celebration should be, no, this person wasn't, the other person wasn't murdered, especially when it's a person of color. Um, and that's something I think we, we should we should talk about and, and it's heavy on my heart and, and within our community. So uh, other than that, no, I, I just think, you know, having more conversations about current events can be really, really uh, uh, can be, can bring value as well. Got it, got it, awesome. Thank you, thank you for bringing that. <laughs> Oh, no, of course. Absolutely. Thank you. I love what you just said. You know, the, it's the tension between celebration and caution. And we have to be, and, and I would even say reflection, because usually if someone is convicted, particularly a police officer is convicted, um, that means that there was a victim um, exactly. and there was pain. And so being reflected, reflective of that pain and holding space for that pain also. And this, uh, I always feel mixed emotions um, when these things come up. But, so thank you for that. And um, I just really thank you so much for, for contributing to this repository. I really loved your answers. I, some of the things you were saying, I'm like, man, get out of my head. 
you just follow me around like saying the stuff I say, just the <laughs> of the world, whatever. But you know, I just really appreciate that, and and I'm so grateful that um, that you exist in the world. I'm so excited for and proud of your success, um, and and it's really great. I remember back in the day. Um, I'm old enough to remember when it black, a lot of black people weren't on TV. And, you know, like The Price is Right or, or um, what's the show, Jeopardy or, or Wheel of Fortune. It's like, oh, black people on TV, black people on TV. And all of us would get around the TV and watch and root, you know. Um, and so, um, it, and so I, I am proud of you in Thank that. You. You know? And so I'm so, so grateful. Um, and so I honor you, my king. And I pray that you will continue to grow and deepen and get wider. And as your connections grow deeper and wider, your epic dreams, both professionally and personally, will come true. And that because we are all beneficiaries of your dream also. And so I thank you so much for being here. And I thank you for joining us. I hope that you were as inspired as I was with this conversation and enjoyed this conversation as much as I have. Um, if there is a positive and successful Black man in your life that you want to see highlighted in this form, please click the link below or in my bio and we'll uh, submit the nomination form and we'll take it from there. I always say, and I, it bears repeating, success does not mean what someone does for a living. You may in fact be, or he may in fact be an Emmy Award winner, but he also could be a sanitation worker. And it's everyone in between because what's important is the impact that this man has on the lives of others, be it the nuclear family or the larger community and everything in between. Those are the brothers that we want to speak with, who we want to contribute to this narrative. And so, you know, in the meantime, um, stay tuned for next week for yet another amazing brother. And remember to spread love and have a great day. Thanks so much. And thank you so much, Thomas. That was really awesome. Thank, thank you. you.